Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about testing your freshwater aquarium using the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. I'll break it down a little bit for you guys, show you the proper way to do it. That way I can solve some issues that I've been seeing with this test kit specifically. Let's jump right into the video. Here we are at the tank. I hope the lighting's uh, not too terrible. We're going to jump right into it. We have an API Freshwater Master Test Kit here. The newer version with the plastic vials here with the close uh, attached lids. First things first, we're not going to use the pH test just for the sake of the video. <clears throat> I'm not going to go over that. It's super simple. Add five milliliters to the tube, put in either five drops for the high range pH or three drops for your regular pH um, chemical. Shake it up, read the result. We're going to skip that just for the sake of the video. We're going to jump right into the other three tests that it includes. With that being said, the first thing I want to mention other than what I just spoke about, get yourself a syringe. This is gonna help a lot in aiding the filling of these vials. That way, instead of dunking them in the tank and dumping it out and constantly trying to get that level to five milliliters, you're gonna be able to do that way easier using drop by drop method. Simply put, we're just gonna suck up a vial of this. This is a six milliliter syringe, which gives me a little bit more than I need to fill up one vial. Coming back to the vial, I'm going to fill up this one here to the five milliliter mark. As you can see, drip by drip, gets me to that perfect level every time. Now for the sake of the video again, we're gonna skip the rest of this and just cut right to them being filled and then explaining the um, actual test process. One quick thing to mention when filling these vials is to grab your water that you're going to be testing from the cleanest part of your tank, um, most likely being right of, around the outflow of your filter, the, that way you keep as much sediment out of the vial as possible. Our first test on the board here today, now you can do this in any particular direction, but I like to do ammonia, nitrite, and then nitrate. Ammonia, let's start with that. Ammonia is a two-part solution, bottle one, bottle two, both of each requiring eight drops individually. I like to always give mine a quick shake. Now we're gonna do this from left to right. We're going to simply add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops, holding the bottle horizontally to the vial directly like that to get uniform drops. Again, another quick shake of bottle number two. This is a lot more of a thinner solution, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're right above it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cap it, remove it from your test tube stand if you don't have one. Just make sure you're doing it in a location that if you spill it, it's not gonna harm any tanks. Five seconds, that's all I like to do with these. Cap it, set it aside. Next test we're gonna be doing will be our nitrite test. Nitrite, as you can see, is a one bottle test. There's no two parts to it. And you simply add five drops and shake and cap. I'll show you that real quick now, just so you can see. Give it a little shake, of course. One, two, three, four, five. Cap it up. Cap your test file. Give it a couple little whirls and then set aside. And now we're going to jump into nitrite, which is a little bit more complex. I'm gonna spend a couple more minutes breaking this one down for you. Again, as you can see here, just like the ammonia test, nitrite is a two-part test containing one bottle bottle number one and bottle number two, each of which you need to add 10 drops. As you can see labeled there, there's 10. Now, the simple process to this is you add your 10 drops to your vial of five milliliters, cap and then shake to completely mix the first solution. After you cap and shake, you then, very important step, do not skip this step, is to vigorously shake solution, which is bottle number two, Solution number two, bottle two, for 30 seconds to, in order to aerate it or whatever they have formulated, it's very important to, to shake it for 30 seconds. That's pointed out clearly in the instructions. And um, so after you shake that for 30 seconds, add 10 drops to the solution of your already shaken number one, that'll be in your vial, and then vigorously shake for one minute or it says end to end tilt and invert for one minute. And that's how you'll complete your test. Anyways, 
We're gonna break that down right now for you guys. That way you can see it firsthand. We have our other two tests developing as you can see. So I always give about a little shake. This is solution number one. We're gonna do 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna take this, cap it, give it a couple shakes, and that's good. Now for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna show you me shaking this for 30 seconds, but that's what you need to do. As you've just seen, we shaken, we have shaken our solution number one, bottle number one. Now we're shaking this for 30 seconds after we are going to add 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, remembering to keep the bottle completely vertical to the vial. And simply put, we're going to invert this for one minute. I like to go one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth for 60 seconds. Now, after we have shaken the last test for one minute, we're going to, what API rec or, uh, suggests is that you wait five minutes for the test to develop. It's not really a suggestion, it's the process. Wait five minutes for the test to develop for all three. What I recommend doing, what I do myself, is I start that five minute timer after I shake my nitrate test for one minute. So now we'll wait five minutes for those tests to develop and we'll come back and take a peek at them. All right, it has been a little shy of five minutes. As you can see from the last clip, we have some different colors in our vials, specifically the nitrate test. Now we're gonna go over those simply for you. Um, on the back of your manual here, you will have your uh, indicators, color indicators. We'll start with ammonia. As you can see, you have your pH here, your high range pH, um, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. We'll start with ammonia. I will state on the video they don't very they don't show up very well, but I can assure you that my ammonia is at zero ppm. It does tend to be a little bit green no matter what is going on. Now you're gonna to wanna to read these against the white portion of the booklet here. Not to worry, these are waterproof, so you're not gonna damage it. You read it against that back there. Now, like I said, it looks like on video that I have 0.25 parts per million. I can assure you that it is at zero. It's just the way the video looks for some reason. So you're gonna to wanna to do this under natural lighting, it claims, or you know, such as a aquarium light like this. This is a daylight 5,000 Kelvin tank uh, or 5,000 Kelvin uh, shop light. So that's about as daylight as I'm gonna get right now. And now I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna compare it and look at the closest color matching to it. If it's kind of in between, then it's in between. For instance, if I think it's in between zero and 0.25, it's gonna be, you know, uh, 0.12 or whatever. It's gonna be a quarter of that or half of that. So uh, moving on, <clears throat> excuse me. Nitrite, same thing. We're gonna put it down here, color code it, and figure out exactly where it's at. Simple. Nitrate, same thing. Bring it down over here. Nitrate's definitely gonna have some color to it most of the time when your tank is cycled. As you can see, we're sitting right around, if I'd have to say so myself, probably a little bit over 20, and that's because I am due for a water change, so we're probably right around 30 parts per million. Simply put, that is how you read the test. Of course, when it comes to pH, and you, know, you have your charts here, pretty self-explanatory there. Again, just make sure you're doing it under a good light source, such as this, your aquarium light, um, as well as holding it to that white background there, because sometimes if you don't, you can tell it looks a little bit different versus when I put it up to the, the white background. Now, we're gonna get into a little bit about what these tests mean real quick. You know, we're gonna keep it simple. I don't wanna bore you guys. Ammonia is the most toxic of each of these three parameters here. Ammonia is most toxic, nitrite is a little less toxic, and nitrate is not very harmful at all. Simply put, the nitrogen cycle, bacteria eats the ammonia, they then digest it, and, and, it create, and then the byproduct is nitrite. Then a different set of bacteria eats the nitrite and converts it into a nitrate, which is only removed by water changes or live aquarium plants using up that nitrate in order to fuel the photosynthesis and cause growth. 
Simply put, that is the cycle of the aquarium. That's the nitrogen cycle. That's how your tank thrives. If the ammonia is too high, you need to resource and go back to the manual, look at what it tells you to do. Depending on if your tank is brand new, you may want to leave it to sit, do some more research on that as we're not going to get into that too far in this video, but ammonia can be super deadly. Again, nitrite as well can be deadly during the cycle process. It will spike at some point, as will the ammonia. You need to either wait it out or if it gets to an extreme amount, do a slight water change, add more beneficial bacteria such as Seachem Stability and Pristine in order to combat that. And in an emergency situation, you can add some Seachem Prime to detoxify that ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Um, so moving on from nitrate to nit or excuse me, nitrite to nitrate, our last and final uh, byproduct from that beneficial bacteria, again, is the least harmful. It can be harmful in high amounts, but at the low amounts, um, you know, 40 ppm or below, it's not going to cause much damage uh, really at all to your fish. It's going to rather, as we can visibly see here, cause an unsightly algae bloom, such as that brown algae or detritus as some people call it. As you can see, it's building up on the tip of the leaves here, signaling and me reading that, I know I need to change my water because my nitrates are getting high. As you can see again, they are quite red, so it is time for a water change 100%. I have yet to change the water in this tank yet, and it has been a couple weeks. As you can see, after we let it develop a little bit longer, it's actually getting a little bit darker. So, definitely do for a water change. Anyways, guys, I hope that covers some of the concern and comments that I've been seeing and possible misuses of the test and hopefully that can I that, that shows you the proper procedure and I hope I did well on, on on that and keeping it as simple as possible for you guys and not to bore you so anyways let me know how I did leave a comment down below I hope you subscribe I hope you like the video and I hope you stick around for more awesome videos to come again guys leave some feedback down in the comments let me know we'll see you in the next one